CC Bennett. Welcome to this video presentation and today we're going to be looking at the digestive system. In particular we're going to be looking at some habits that can wreak havoc on our digestive system. Now have a look at this image. What does it conjure up to you? Does this look like someone in, who is happy and relaxed? Or does it look uh, like someone who's in pain or discomfort? Well, isn't this how a lot of us are after we've eaten a meal? And have we ever considered, stopped to consider why this could be? Could it be some habits that we're doing that could be causing us to go through pain, um, discomfort, bloating, flatulence, diarrhea, constipation, and a whole host of other gastrointestinal um, symptoms. Um, but before I dwell, dwell into that, let's look at briefly at the digestive system. Now the digestive system is one large organ um, running from the mouth right down to the anus. Um, and that organ is the esophagus. Now, when we put food in our mouth, that food has to be broken down into smaller molecules so that it can be digested and absorbed um, through the small intestine to extract the, the nutrients that we need from that food. Now, um, for example, if we eat carbohydrate, that digestive enzyme is going to be amylase. That is going to break that food down into smaller molecules. It mixes with the saliva and breaks that food down into smaller molecules so that it can be properly um, digested and absorbed. Now there's different digestion points for different foods. So for carbohydrate, um, it begins in the mouth and the process continues um, right down to the, the stomach. And for protein, the digestion point is in the stomach and the digestive enzyme is protease, protease and it mixes with the uh, other gastric juices and hydrochloric acid. And for fats, the digestion point is again the stomach, but other ancillary organs comes into play. And so we have the liver, the liver produces bile, which is stored in the gallbladder, and the pancreas releases pancreatic enzyme. And together they break down and emulsify fats for absorption. Now, when the food goes into the mouth, um, it's known as bolus. And it travels down the esophagus um, by a means known as peristalsis wave. So that's a wave of um, contraction and relaxation that pushes the food down into the stomach. So when it gets to the stomach, it's known as chyme. It's liquefied and it's like, you know, a process, like you think of a food process, how we churn and we chyme, uh, you know, food together. So that's what it, it becomes liquid. And so you see, we have no teeth in the stomachs, so and this is why it's so important that we masticate our food thoroughly in the, in the mouth. Now, um, let's look at the first habit that we could have that could hinder digestion. And I've alluded to that already in the fact that not chewing enough. So we need to masticate our food thoroughly at least 30 to 60 times or whatever works best for you, know, for, you, for you, however number of times it takes you to turn that food into liquid. So you think of it, you've made a lovely, delicious um, you know, green juice, but even that juice filled with micronutrient has to be digested and absorbed, um, so we don't just gulp it down, we need to chew that, that drink, so that again we can extract the micronutrient. Because micronutrient. what chewing does, it, it it increases the surface area for absorption through the small intestine. So another habit that we could have is drinking with our meals. Now, drinks should be done half an hour before or two and a half hours after our, our meals because we've talked about the digestive enzymes. So what, we, what happens is that when we drink with the meals, we dilute those digestive enzymes. Now, the carbonated drinks are even you know, worse than the tourists for nullifying the gastric juices. So even your sparkling water would have the same effect. Drinking is, is very important, but we need to drink at the appropriate time and not with our meals. Another habit that we could have is eating spicy foods um, and fatty foods. Spicy foods cause heartburn and also they can lead to, to ulcers. Another habit that we have, many of our, us have is snacking. Now, um, snacking, what it does, you imagine you've had a meal. You go straight after that, 10 minutes later, to have something else to do. 
what you've then done is slow down the digestion of the first meal. It's going to sit there, it's going to um, putrefy, it's going to become toxic. And it's become a, a breeding, ground for, breeding ground for parasites and it becomes a heavisome burden for our body. So if we're snacking continually, we need to question why that is. If we've just, had, particularly we've just had a meal, why are we snacking? Let's go back to breakfast. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And that breakfast should consist of complex um, ca um, carbs, rich in um, nutrients, rich in uh, micronutrients, uh, rich in fiber. And so these are the type of food that was, will keep us filled for longer. And if we, as opposed to simple carbs, high glycemic index food. What do I mean by high glycemic? I mean high in sugar. That means this is going to raise blood sugar very um, rapidly and it's going to come down very, very uh, rapidly. So we're going to feel hungry again and we're going to set up that vicious cycle. Eating a complex carb um, food will keep us filled for, for longer. So um, let's think, uh, you know, again of the old hadrich um, which says we should eat breakfast like a king, um, lunch like a prince, and supper like a, pau a pauper. Um, another the reason why we might be snacking, it could be simply that we're dehydrated. So um, the body's sending signals say well, we're hungry, but really we need to hydrate. We need to drink w water because um, water uh, is cons makes up 70% of our body and it's needed for hydration, to regulate body temperature, to drive um, the nutrients into the cells, um, to trans help to transport oxygen, help to eliminate waste. So water plays a vital um, process in our bodily functions. And so it's important to keep hydrated. We, we talk about uh, micronutrient. So that needs to be transported and, and into the cells. And that's what's going to make us feel filled. So we need to be drinking that water to help with that process. Another habit that we could have is that we're eating late at night. Now, whilst it's, um, you know, might have a beautiful plate of uh, complex carb filled with vitamins, mineral and micronutrient. But if we're eating that just before bed, that's not a good time because um, when we eat food, what does food do? As well as give us the micronutrient, it's giving us the energy that we need. When we're going to bed, we don't need that energy, you know, so we should have had that meal early in the day so we can burn that energy off. So if we're going to bed with a full stomach, it's going to disturb our sleep. We're not going to get into that state where we can um, rest, digest and repair. And also important to, to be mindful that between the hours of 11 and 2 in the morning, that's when our digest uh, digesting, uh, our body repairs itself. And so we don't want to be eating, um, going to bed on a full stomach. So um, try to eat at least four or five hours um, before you go to bed so that meal can be fully digested. Um, so that once you go to bed, you can be sleeping undis undisturbed and not waking up feeling groggy in the morning, and also knowing that you would have given your body the opportunity to rest and properly repair, to leave you um, revitalized for the next day. Now, if we continue to um, irritate the gut lining, we're gonna set up a condition um, called, for, called leaky gut. And what that is, is that um, in our small intestines, we have um, the microvilli, and we're going to um, damage those microvilli. The microvilli is why the digestion and absorption take place. We're going to create gaps in the, in the small intestine, in the microvilli. We also have tight junctions. We're going to open those tight junctions. And now, so now we, we have large particles of food going directly to the, to the bloodstream. And as well as that, we're going to be having things that shouldn't be going through, such as parasites, bacteria, um, toxins, and a whole host of other things. This is going to set up us, us up for inflammation and a cascade of autoimmune conditions um, such as lupus, Hashimoto's, thyroid conditions, um, you know, a number of neurological brain conditions. So we need to be careful, be mindful of the habits that we're um, engaging in that's disrupted to our digestive system 
and ultimately lead to a lot of degenerative um, diseases. Um, in our next presentation, we're going to be looking at another big factor that can affect our gastrointestinal um, system in a negative way, and that is stress. So for, the, for now, until I see you next time, thank you for watching. And whatever you do, whatever you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. Thank you. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Thank you.